This man kicks in the bedroom door. I'm talking about like, boom, boom, boom. Kicks it in. So here I am, looking lost, looking scared. So now I'm like, I don't know where he's at. And I wasn't about to go check. I'm literally sitting in the closet like, shiver me timbers. take the tags off. <laughs> My mama bought me this outfit from Zara, you know, because she loved me or whatever. It probably only looked cream or white on the camera. I can't really see because I ain't got my glasses on. Cream outfit, you know what I'm saying? Got it with the bag or whatever, you know what I'm saying? My little Gucci bag. My mama ain't bought me this. She don't love me that much. <laughs> and the J's. Okay, the J's to match. Cream J's. Hopefully y'all can't see the scuffs. I ain't been taking care of my shoes lately. We looking fresh out here, boy. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Tyler LaDuff, and I'm back with another video. Today is the part two of my story time series of my boyfriend tried to kill me. Please, if you have not watched part one, please go watch part one before watching this one. This part is probably gonna be the juiciest one with all the tea and stuff, but please go watch part one so that you can understand the foundation of how this relationship even started and how I got to this point. Cause I think that's very important. And then come back to the video. For those that have seen part one, welcome. Go ahead and hit that like button. Leave some comments in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button if you're new so that you can stay tuned for part three. If you haven't watched part one, I will include it somewhere up here so that you can click on it or whatever. I don't know which way. I don't know where it's gonna be, but it's gonna be somewhere up there. Continuing the story from part one, we are going to talk about the day everything went down. When I mean everything went down, I mean everything went down. It was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This happened on a Friday. I got extremely sick. Like I thought, you know, I just, I just wanted to die. That's how sick I was. Not literally, not literally at this time. <laughs> like I didn't really want to die though. Okay. So I didn't think it was going to be this big of a deal. Closer to the end of the night, Don, my boyfriend at the time, he's my ex now, was taking care of me, like doing the most. I'm talking about like, babe, do you need any medicine? Babe, let me pour you up something to drink. Babe, let me get you some food. Oh my gosh, babe, are you tucked in nicely? Is the temperature on? Is the sun setting properly in the right direction for you? Now look, y'all are probably like, okay, he was catering to you. No, babe, that's not what was happening. Don hated taking care of me whenever I was sick. Don actually did not take care of me not one time whenever I was sick. I think I was sick about like two or three times throughout this relationship. But Don literally told me before to go get up and go get my own medicine like from the store or chicken noodle soup or anything that I needed from the store because he didn't feel like getting up and that I should just suck it up and deal with it, okay? And guess what? I really did get up and go get me my own NyQuil and my own pain relievers and my own chicken noodle soup before because I, my own orange juice, I was so baffled at the fact that Don told me this. <laughs> <laughs> didn't love me. That's another red flag, okay? So in this particular situation where he was overly trying to take care of me, I already knew something was up and something about to go down because this can't be for real, all right? <laughs> so that night I was laying in bed, literally coughing my guts up. It's so much congestion. I just, he had went to the store, got me some NyQuil, got me some chicken noodle soup, warmed it up, you know, poured me some NyQuil and everything like that. It was great. And you know what? I wasn't gonna say no because my body was so weak, I just wanted to just lay there. After I ate and took all the NyQuil and stuff, he comes in and brings me a glass of cranberry juice and vodka. And I'm over here like, where do you get this vodka from? Cause you know, I didn't have no alcohol in the house. And at this time, Don ain't had no job. Don was not working, no nothing. I actually gave him my card so that he can go buy the NyQuil and the chicken noodle soup. Cause he got fired, okay. 
So when he told me he bought me some cranberry juice and some vodka, I'm like, where'd you get the vodka? I already knew where he got the vodka. It was on my card. It was my money. He was talking about some, I just thought that you would really enjoy a glass of cranberry juice and vodka because hopefully the vodka can like loosen up the congestion. Some bullshit. You're not supposed to drink alcohol when you sit. Now look, I do like me a good, uh, What's that alcohol drink name? Oh, a hot toddy. Y'all ever had y'all ever had a hot toddy before? I think it's whiskey, some honey, some uh, some uh, water, and some peppermint. Oh, baby. Oh no, no water. It's literally just whiskey, honey. Oh, and peppermint. Oh, I love that as like a little winter drink. Y'all should try it and put y'all on. Get your favorite whiskey. So I'm over here like in my head already knowing you bought a bottle of vodka on my card and you're about to drink it. I already know you are. Now look, I didn't have the strength nor the energy that night to really like contest why he bought the bottle of vodka. So as I'm getting ready to lay down and go to sleep, I decided to stay tuned for the night because Don got in the shower and I'm like, Don don't really take showers. So what does he get in the shower for? Then he stayed in the bathroom for like a long period of time. You can hear him like open up the drawer, like getting ready, like as if he's like doing his hair that he ain't really got, you know, stuff like that. So I'm like, what is really going on here? So when he gets out the bathroom, he starts to get dressed and stuff. So I already know he about to go somewhere. On top of that, I already know that it's about to involve drinking because he bought the bottle of vodka. He ain't bought that bottle of vodka for me because he was oh so worried about me being sick. He bought a bottle of vodka for him with my money. So <coughs> when he got all dressed and stuff, he thought he was just gonna get out of my bedroom and stuff and act like I wasn't gonna say nothing. So I said, where are you going? And he said, what should I call this person? JT. He said JT invited him out to a party that night. Don't worry though, he's not going to drink like that. So now I'm pissed as hell. I'm pissed as hell because you bought the bottle of vodka for yourself. You already knew you was about to go to a goddamn party. You knew you was about to get unconsciously drunk and you knew that I was gonna be mad about it. So fuck all this, you're trying to take care of me because I'm sick. You did all that in hopes that I wasn't gonna say nothing about you drinking. Cause y'all know I was monitoring his drinking because of his alcohol problem. And look, he's a grown man. I generally can't force him to not drink, but Don literally has an alcohol problem. So if any alcohol came up in here, I'd pour it down the sink and stuff. I don't have the physical energy to contest this man over no alcohol. So I get mad, my heart rate racing and stuff. Cause I'm like, you, you bought the bottle so that you can go drink. You already knew you were going to a house party. Like you're acting like this just happened. So I said, don't get drunk. I don't feel like dealing with that when you get home. I already know that you're gonna be drunk off your ass and I'm, I'm, I'm sick, I, I, I can't, I don't have the energy. And don't you dare take my car. Cause let me tell y'all something, Don, took my car, like Don ain't, he ain't had a car. So if Don was getting somewhere, he was getting somewhere because I was driving or I let him drive my car, somebody was picking him up or he was taking the city bus. So I told him, don't take my goddamn car. And you know what he told me? Oh, I'm not gonna take the car, JT picking me up and whatever, da da da. Some bullshit too. Because look y'all, <laughs> I have a very good, like sense of when somebody's really BSing me, okay? And I already knew that was BS. When I was like, all right, just go bro. I literally stayed awake and watched him on my lo on the location of my car. He turned the car on and drove off. Now look, he told me that the party was right around the corner. I don't give a fuck if the party is next door. If I say don't take my guy, if I say don't take my car, that means don't take my car, okay? And he took my car. So now I'm pissed the fuck off. Cause now you're about to drink and drive. You're about to drink and drive in my car. And then you also didn't give a fuck about me saying don't take my car. And if JT was really going to this party, he should have picked you up. I cussed his ass out through text. I sure did. And I'm just like, you know what? Like I, you don't care. So that was an argument. So then I was like, you know what, Tylen? You're sick, just go to sleep. Give it to God. So guess what I did? I gave it to God, amen. I sure did. Until he got back to the apartment. Woo! This is when everything went down. I'm asleep and all of a sudden I get woken up 
by a loud poof. That's him coming through the front door. So then I hear him stumble, hit, hit my dining room set, like, like fall, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know? Then I hear a glass break, and I'm like, oh my God, he's this drunk. So now my heart's racing. I'm just like, I, I just, I can't even imagine what is about to happen. I already know that he's so drunk. And here's the thing, y'all. I'm really cautious because my brother and I, we live together, okay? I am very, very cautious about my brother's life. I, I, I care about my brother's life more than my own. You are so drunk stumbling up in this house, I don't even know what you're capable of right now. So then as I'm laying there, and it's pitch, it's pitch black. It's pitch, it's like very dark in this apartment. He come through my door, fling the door open to where the door bounces off the wall, and he's just like, bitch, 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 ah. So I'm over here playing sleep. I know he can't see me because it's dark as hell. There ain't no lights on. He didn't turn on that one single light. So that's why he was stumbling up in here, broke some glass and stuff and stumbling all over the goddamn dining room table. So I know that he can't see me. He stumbled into the room. Then he went to the bathroom and slammed the door. As he's inside of the bathroom, he starts doing these like, he's doing like these demonic voices that sound like he's possessed. And I'm going to include the clip here so that y'all can hear this because this is not his voice. When like the last time that I've seen Don like this was whenever he first got down to Texas and he was uh, drinking and peed all over the bathroom floor and my mattress and stuff like that. I haven't seen Don like this since that that day. OK, so the voice that he was portraying definitely was like him being super fucked up. So if y'all want to take a listen, I'm going to put the clip right here. It's pitch black, so it'll just be audio, but y'all got to listen to this. So in this moment with that audio, because I, I never recorded him before. Like when you're really in a situation like that to where like your fight or flight kicks in, the last thing I'm thinking about is pulling out my phone to record. I, I, well, that's just me. I don't know about y'all. People be, they would film, I don't know, them getting shot up or a nuke dropping. I don't, I don't even know. Just to post it on social media. Me, it's either I'm whooping your ass or I'm getting out. I started recording his voice. And you know, I'm so sick, but like my heart's pounding because I'm like, I already know how he gets whenever he's drunk. What is about to happen? So then I turn off my phone, like I stop recording. I have several videos, so like it's like on and off. Like this went on for minutes, okay? So then I hear him start opening and closing the cabinet, talking about some, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Right? So I'm over here like, what the hell are you looking for? Like, where is it? Yeah, where is it? For real. And so I started thinking, you know, my I, I think I told y'all before, my weapons started disappearing from the apartment. I have replaced them. And I'm over here thinking if he's opening and closing cabinets in the bathroom, I wonder if he's the one who if he like taped it on the side of a cabinet or putting it in a drawer. Cause I looked everywhere. I didn't know where it was at. So I'm just like, what you talking about? Where is it? What you looking for in the bathroom? I like that's when my adrenaline really, really kicked in. Cause I'm like I don't even know if I have enough time because of how aggressive he's being and how loud he is. He can come out of that bathroom any second and want to put his hands on me or something or whatever he's looking for in the bathroom. I didn't even have the time I felt like because I didn't want to make any noise to even go get my shit. I grab my dog and I quietly get up off of the bed and I get out of my bedroom. I close the door real, real, real lightly so that he didn't hear me leave. And then I go to my other room. So I have three rooms. I thought about going into my brother's room and locking the door and waking him up and telling him what's going on, but I really didn't want him knowing all this was happening. I just, I, I just, I don't know. So I locked myself into the other room. Now, y'all are probably thinking like, Ty, like you really should have went to the other room with your brother because what, what would happen? Don doesn't associate with my brother, nor does my brother even know that any of this stuff is going on. Like my brother and I, we live together for about a year now. And any of these situations that happen, like my brother has no no 
clue that this happens. Now, he does know that Don is weird, but they haven't had enough dialogue together to where Don would even like go to my brother or my brother really even had like a judgment against Don. And we all live in the same house. Like, it's just, I don't even know. So yeah, it's weird. In the case that something was going to happen to my brother, I mean, the rooms, the, the other two rooms are really, they're right next to each other. So if I needed to bust out of there real quick, then I was going to bust out of there real quick. I grabbed my stainless steel knife out of the kitchen and I took my ass to the other bedroom and I locked myself in it and I called 911. So as I'm on the phone with the 911 operator, you know, she's asking me everything that's going on and I'm telling her I'm telling her what's going on and that I'm scared for my life and that, you know, my partner came home drunk and I, I just I don't I don't know. I don't know what's about to happen. You know, she's asking me, "Where is he?" You know, like, "Are you in immediate danger? What's this?" Well, they asked, "Do I need police fire?" EMS at first, I told him police and stuff. Telling her everything that's going on. She can actually hear him because he starts screaming. He comes out of the room. He's screaming, talking about some, where you at, bitch? And, you know, the 911 operator's like, you know, tired. Like, are you with me? Like, do you, like, are you good? Like, is he in the room with you? Does he have any weapons? Like, all this, all this stuff. So I'm on the phone with her saying, I don't know if he, I don't know if he has a weapon. I locked myself in the other room. She's asking me how many other people are there, da, da, da. So I'm just saying, like, I don't know. Like, I'm really whispering on the phone because I didn't want him to hear me like be inside of the room and here's the thing I turned on the vent to my brother's uh to my brother's bathroom because he has the guest bathroom so the vent is so loud so where like I was hoping that it would drain out a lot of his like yelling and any potential noise that I could possibly um be making while I'm on the phone so he didn't hear me at first y'all so I'm on the phone and I'm on operator she's like you know hold on just be be careful like uh, uh the police are on the way blah blah so you know she's just sitting on the phone with me asking me his name his date of birth all of this stuff and I'm telling her that you know he's super drunk um she asked me does, does he ever get aggressive and abusive whenever um, he's drunk and I said yes he has before so she's just like you know are you in a safe environment whatever and I'm like I'm in the closet inside of the bedroom whatever so she's like okay just stay with me you know help is on the way like whatever and I told her that you know I got a knife too just in case and whatever so she's just talking to me asking me all these questions and stuff like that and then nothing like you don't even hear no type of yelling anymore you don't even hear him so she's like, so are like, are you safe? Like, you know, I don't hear anything anymore. Is everything okay? And I'm like, I think so. Like, I'm not about to go outside and go pee or nothing. Like, I, I'm not about to do that. <laughs> okay. And she's like, okay, well, can you please like, you know, open the gates or, or is there any way that you can open the gates for the police to get in? Because where I live, that you have to open the gates with your phone. Like, you know, it's like a, it's like a pass. I don't hear him. Until y'all, you know, I, pee, I, I, like, I come out the closet a little bit and I'm starting to walk through the front door to, to the bedroom door. This man kicks in the bedroom door. I'm talking about like, boom, 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 kicks it in. So here I am looking lost, looking scared, screaming. I run my ass back to the closet because I'm just like, I cannot believe this. Cause you can hear him just saying, bitch, bitch. Like, like this is some type of scary movie. I, like I'm literally living a fucking nightmare. Like I, I can't, I can't even. You kick, kick the door in, so it's still pitch black. I didn't turn on no lights. He didn't turn on the lights either. I got smart lights. So like really, like I have the app to turn on all the lights, and like it, it's complicated. And he, he's stupid as hell. He don't know how to turn on these lights. No way. I'm back in the closet. The operator's like, Ty, Ty, are you there? Are you there? Are you there? The police is, the police is right here. The police is right here. And I'm like. He just kicked in the door like I'm over here thinking like this is the end. This is the end for me. This is this is this is I can't even. Y'all I'm laughing about this right now, but like the flashbacks of all of this happening is so traumatizing. I'm laughing about it because laughter is the best medicine. That's really all that I can do and go to therapy. So after he kicked in the door, nothing. Didn't see him. He didn't come in. Nothing. So now I'm like, I don't know where he's at. And I wasn't about to go check. I'm literally sitting in the closet like Shiver me timbers. So then it came to me. The operator can hear all this happening. I know to the severity of this call that the cops are rolling deep. Okay, the cops are rolling in deep. Y'all are probably gonna think I'm stupid for this, but I tell the operator, can you just please tell the cops that Don has a mental illness, okay? We're trying to work on his drinking problem. And tonight, definitely drink a lot, because you can tell. Um, I don't think that he has any weapon, and he's not in any immediate, he's not in any danger to anybody. 
Because you know, you know, y'all, I'm telling her this because the last thing I need is for someone dead in my apartment. Can you imagine how traumatizing that is as well? Although this situation is very traumatizing, can you imagine the cops busting down my goddamn door and shooting somebody? I, I can't. I can't. Especially somebody that I knew and like, you know, have all this history and all this time with, I, or accidentally shoot me. Like, he's black, I'm black. <laughs> Let's be for real here. I'm trying to like, Tone down the operator to like, I don't know how it works behind the scenes. I'm trying to tone down the operator for the severity of this call because I already know that they're about to roll in deep. They already hear, okay? So then I hear them, you know, police, police, you know, banging on the door. And she, the operator's like, okay, the police should be there, whatever. And I'm like, okay, can you tell them or phone them, ping them, whatever you can to let them know that I'm coming to the door. I do got a knife in my hand. I don't know where Don is at. He could be peeping around any goddamn like little corner over here. So, you know, I'm telling her that and I, like, I, I'm getting close to the front, you know, to the bedroom door. I walk out, still don't see him. And then I walk into the living room and he passed out on the couch, just like that. So I don't even know if he faking it or whatever, or if he just like passed out because he heard the cops and he already know that he acted. I don't even know. I go to the front door. I, I tell the operator, can you just let you know? I, I, I'm coming to the door, I'm about to unlock it. <laughs> so then I unlock the door, open it up. There's like eight cops deep. They like all on the side. It was so funny. Cause I, I get it. They don't want to stand in front of the door just in case, you know, like they get like, you know. Oh, you scared me, Russ. Oh y'all, I'm so traumatized. My dog in the corner scratching this stuff. I just, Anyway, so the cops are all like to the side of the door just in case. And you know, I'm like, hey, I'm tired. I made the call, you can come in. He sleep on the couch. So they like, so you okay. So it's like, the cops look like they're about to run a train on me because they all coming in single file line. Like it's the, I told the 911 operator here, we hang up, whatever. So I'm talking to this lady cop and she's like, can you explain to me a little bit more what's going on? Like, da, da, da. so I tell her everything. I kind of give her a rundown of the history. I said, you know, he's drunk. You know, I, I didn't have my glasses either. Like, y'all, I'm completely blind without my glasses if I don't have contacts on. So one of the cops is coming up and asking me. So I know that, you know, you, you express concerns, uh, concerns about there being an alcohol problem. Are you aware that he's drank an entire bottle of vodka that's laying on the ground? And I said, y'all, I, I can't see. So I don't even know, like, is the bottle empty? And they said, yeah, the bottle's empty. So that was a brand new bottle of vodka, a one liter bottle of vodka, and he drank it all himself. Like, <laughs> I, I, I like, I know that I can drink, I can, I can hold my liquor. You know, I'm pretty well at doing that. But like, for somebody like this, drinking a whole liter of, you know, like, I just, it makes me sad. I just, I can't. So, you know, they're talking to me, they're, they woke him up and he's like disoriented still. And, you know, I'm asking the lady cop, like, what, what can I do? Like, this is, this is, this is it. Like, this, this is to the severity of like, can you tell that there's something wrong with him? Can y'all take him to a hospital? And she said, you know, all I can tell right now is that he's severely intoxicated. Uh, we're gonna get EMS out here to where, you know, hopefully he volunteers to be able to, for them to take his vitals and stuff like that. But I'm basically trying to get help because I don't even know where else to turn. But she's basically telling me that if he doesn't consent to going to the hospital or getting treatment, there's nothing that they can do. So I'm telling her, I'm like, okay, then y'all do something whenever it's too late. And they're questioning him and he's fidgety and one of the cops are just like, I need you to sit down, I need you to calm down. EMS gets here, they take his vitals, his blood pressure's off the chart, his heart rate's off the chart. So you know, they're telling him like, we really want to get you to the hospital, your vitals are so high. Like, and that could be anxiety for him and whatever. So you know, they're asking me all personal questions, you know, his name, date of birth and everything. Then it clicked to me y'all. As I'm saying his date of birth and I look at my phone and I look at the calendar, it was his birthday. So I'm like, that makes so much sense. You used my car to go get a bottle because you wanted to party that night leading into your birthday. I completely forgot it was his birthday. I was literally so clocked out of the relationship. I don't even give a fuck about birthdays, any type of holiday that was coming up. I completely forgot it was his birthday. So now I'm like, well, now you're going to the hospital, getting arrested on your birthday. That sucks, I'm so sorry. Like, I got all emotional because I'm like, I don't want, I didn't want this to happen. I didn't want all of this to this degree to happen like this. Honestly, it just, it, 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 it triggered me to think about the, the, all the, the years and some months that I spent putting up with this. Like this is not the vision that I had for 
this relationship and everything that's transpired. I'm over here scared for my goddamn life right now, you know? Calling me bitch and doing all this and like being all aggressive, like, I was dead ass scared for my goddamn life. The cops took him to the, the, the they, they took him. He, he agreed to go to the hospital. So the cops took him and I'm over, I, I just, I, I finished talking with the, with the police officer and they told me that, you know, when, when he sobers up at the hospital, he's gonna come back home. You can't not let him come in here because he lives here, <laughs> but try to convince him to get some help. And I'm like, I just, I can't, I can't, <laughs> like, I can't believe this. I can't believe this is actually happening like this. So they took him and he agreed. He calls me while he's in the hospital talking about some, I'll never trust you again. I can't believe that you did this, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then he's over here cussing me out. Then he's telling everybody, I guess his friends and stuff like that, that, that are down here that are messy, that he probably cheated on me with, blowing up my phone, talking about some, oh, Don is, uh, telling me like something happened and everything went down and that he's getting arrested. What happened? Oh my God, what's going on? Y'all, y'all are the hoes. Stop asking me these goddamn questions and stop blowing up my goddamn phone. So I turned my phone off for the night. I am about to deal with that shit. The fuck, who are y'all? So anyways, at the hospital, I don't know what happened. I never gave Don a copy of the key to my apartment. I never gave Don codes, nothing like that, nothing just because like, I, I just didn't know how long that this was gonna last. To me, to this situation here, this is like so severe and such an eye opener for me. And I'm not, I, I can't forget this. I, I, I did, I just can't forget this. I don't know how anybody would forget this. <laughs> that was the day that, that it happened. Why does this happen to me? Y'all, I don't even like this. I don't like none of this. Like all this play, like, I don't know why the people that I have attracted into my life and who I decided to make partners end up like this. Cause at the beginning they're not. So now I'm like, what am I doing? Am I hexed? Am I cursed? Or like something where like, I took my time trying to get to know this one. Who y'all? That concludes part two. <laughs> that was a lot to unpack. Okay, a lot to unpack. So please stay tuned for part three so that I can tell y'all the aftermath of everything that happened. Please like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Let me know what y'all think about this. this. This was a lot. And stay tuned for part three. <laughs> Deuces.